Nothing beats sitting back, sipping a cold one, watching BTP Fusion on YouTube, waiting patiently for the money to roll in, because your investments are on autopilot. In other words, true passive income. Now there are many times in life when it pays to be active. When you're trying to get and stay in shape. When you're streaming a video game live. When in a tap dancing contest. When it comes to investing, more and more the popular method is not to be a day trader. You know, parsing complex charts and scouring the earth for market making tidbits. Instead, the smart money is on taking it easy. We'll take a look into some strategies that employ that mentality using index funds. So, taking it easy with index funds is coming up, so stay locked in. What's up you guys? You're watching BTP Fusion. I'm your lovable, affable, bearded host, Derek West. If this is your first time here, welcome. I think you'll like it. If you're coming back, glad to have you as well. You know how we do it over here. In any case, let's dive right in, shall we? So you know you should be saving your money and using it to invest, right? But the problem then becomes how. How do you do it? The amount of know-how to be able to do that effectively without losing your shirt seems almost excessive. Will you be forced to follow the markets all day, every day, looking for every morsel of information on individual markets to be able to time when to get in and to get out of certain investments? That could require a significant amount of time. Think about real estate for a second. No matter what anyone tells you, real estate is a massive time sink. And while it's true that in the long term, you can really build a ton of wealth, in the meantime, or in the short term, if you're new, expect to pay a ton out of pocket. Plus, spending nights and weekends, you know, whenever you have free time. Either following up with contractors or putting in a little sweat equity of your own. Now that's fine for some people, but what if you just like taking it easy? What about franchises? Well, if you can save up the cash to get one, including the money it will take to get a primo real estate location in a high traffic, high growth area, depending on your franchise type, it can be very lucrative. But what if you only enjoy sipping lattes, not making them? What about options, futures, forex trading, etc.? Well, those things can be even riskier than just general stock trading. I did a video about exotic investment types a little bit earlier. Check out the links in the description or in the bar above. Again, they require time. Time to A, understand what the heck you're doing. B, find the right investment. C, ruthlessly execute with cold-blooded efficiency. Now again, that takes time. Time that none of us really has. This is, of course, unless you're already a savvy day trader, have the bank for real estate, or the bucks for franchises. Well, what about the rest of us that have other things to do with our lives and may not be as well healed? Are we doomed to not being able to retire? or even live the life of our dreams. Hold on one second, buddy. Don't despair. The good news is that it doesn't have to end that way. You can invest and have a life as well. There are a couple ways to do it, really. But today, we're talking about doing it with index funds. Tomorrow, well, who knows? If you hit the like and subscribe button, though, you'll find out before anyone else. But specifically, index fund strategies. Index funds that track the performance of a particular market index, such as the S&P 500, have grown in popularity in recent decades as people have found success investing in the market rather than in individual stocks. As of August 31st, Morningstar figures show that U.S. index funds have $4.27 trillion in assets, compared with $4.25 trillion for actively managed funds that have the goal of beating the market. Index funds are a form of passive investing because they allow investors to buy a lot of stocks at once and hold them for the long term. What's more, they have lower associated costs than actively managed funds. Index funds don't require you to be an expert. While professional investors make a living by trying to outperform the market, that strategy is difficult to successfully execute over a long time period. Even famed billionaire investor Warren Buffett, whose stock picks are closely followed by a lot of folks in the market, has said that index funds make the most sense practically all the time. Now that's because, though individual stock prices can fluctuate wildly, the broader index has tended to go up over time. 
And with index funds, you don't have to pick the winning stocks to benefit from the market's overall gains. The S&P 500, an index representing the 500 largest U.S. companies, has delivered average annual returns of almost 10% going back 90 plus years. The past decade has been good to indexes in general. Since bottoming out in March of 2009, the S&P 500 has surged more than 340%. If you'd invested $500 back then in an ETF that tracks this benchmark index and reinvested your dividends or the quarterly profit you're paid by the fund holder, your investment will be worth more than $2,700 today. And that's with no other cash involved. Fees are kept to a minimum. Index funds pull money from a group of investors and then buy the individual stocks or other securities that make up a particular index. That model helps to reduce the associated costs that fund managers charge compared to those funds where someone is actively strategizing which investment to include. Fees matter because they can cut into your overall return. Among equity mutual funds, those made up of stocks, the average expense ratio for index funds was 0.8% in 2018, compared with 076 for actively managed funds, according to figures from the Investment Company Institute. That works out for $0.70 cents for every $1,000 invested versus $7.60 for every $1,000 invested. By not paying a lot for someone to pick and choose your investments, you get to keep more money to reinvest in your portfolio. Index funds help you to diversify. With an index fund, the mix of stocks, what's known as its diversification, helps to minimize your portfolio's related risk. That means your portfolio's value is less likely to fluctuate. Fluctuate? That means your portfolio's value is less likely to fluctuate wildly because an index like the S&P 500 typically moves up or down less than 1% on any given day. You could buy all components of an index individually, but you spend a lot of money doing so. With an index fund, you can get all of those stocks with a click of a button. But even with that, there are so many index funds to choose from, and it's still possible to lose money when investing in strictly index funds. This is where having a strategy comes in handy dandy. <laughs> And no, I'm not talking about a complex algorithm that you need to execute daily to have success. Remember, I'm trying to be lazy after all. While there are many different strategies out there, they generally break down into three categories. Two fund portfolios, three fund portfolios, four fund portfolios. Let's take a look at all three strategies, shall we? This one is ludicrously simple. Just follow the 60-40 rule of asset allocation. This, is, this one is ludicrously simple. Just follow the 60-40 rule of asset allocation. 60% stocks, 40% bonds. That would change based on your age and expected time to retirement or your investment horizon. The time you expect you will be actively investing. As that window closes or as you approach retirement, you generally want to have more safe funds or assets in your portfolio. And that would apply here as well. But imagine if you're a young gun with 25 plus years to go till you envision retirement, then the 60-40 split is the right allocation for you. If you have a riskier appetite, you can up the percentage of the stock allocation to 70-30. Or if you're being a real rebel, 80-20. Anything more than that, however, and you're risking significant loss and financial stress. Remember, we're trying to keep it lazy and easy and low maintenance with low stress. If you need examples of index funds that can help fill out those allocations, try looking into the Vanguard Total Body Market V&D or the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF, VT. There are other brokers out there that offer these as well. Charles Schwab, Merrill Lynch, many others. Be sure to shop around and look for the right one for you. Let's talk about the three fund portfolio, shall we? This one is also relatively simple. It also follows the 60-40 rule, you know, to keep it nice and simple. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can it follow the 60-40 rule if there are three funds? Can't I do math? Well, here's the thing. You break up the 60% that's allocated into stocks into two different stock classes, typically U.S. stocks and international stocks to help isolate you from localized volatility. As an example, a popular allocation would be 47% U.S. stocks, 18% international stocks, 40% bonds. Like with the two fund is set up, you make sure that this allocation follows your risk tolerance. In other words, if you're older, hold a higher percentage in bonds. If you're a real maverick, risk taker, hold a higher percentage in stocks. Now here's some index funds that can help you fill out your three index fund strategy. The Vanguard Total Stock Market Index. The Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund. The Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund. We've talked about two. We've talked about three. Let's get crazy and talk about four. As a neurologist turned financial wizard, 
and author of Intelligent Asset Allocator and the Birth of Plenty. Dr. William Bernstein has championed the power of the index fund over individual stocks and bonds for years. So he might be a tad bit biased in that regard. But nevertheless, he suggests you put your money in a lazy portfolio that's made of a few of them. One portfolio that he suggests in the Intelligent Asset Allocator is called the No-Brainer Portfolio and is comprised of four equal funds. 25% U.S. stocks, 25% small cap U.S. stocks, 25% international stocks, 25% bonds. James Bonds. No, regular bonds. You can see why it's a no-brainer. This portfolio also gives investors a chance to diversify their risk since there are four equally distributed funds over time. Here are his suggestions for the funds you can invest in. The Vanguard 500 Index, the Vanguard Small Cap Index, the Vanguard Total International Stock Index, Vanguard Total Bond Market Index. I don't know if you noticed or not, but each of those strategies was really just a take on the original 60-40 strategy. You know, except for the four fund strategy. But each time, he would split up the 60% among various index funds. There are funds that have been split into nine allocations, again with 40% in U.S. bonds. Other portfolios have been broken into seven. I bet there are people that have portfolios with five, six, seven, ten, eleven, thirteen, etc. Different allocations. The key is to keep a little bit of a buffer in the bond allocation, at close to about 40%, roughly, and break up that 60% in allocations that don't overlap and are ideally separated geographically to help decrease the risk of domino asset sell-off contagion. You know when a market goes belly up. Or when an entire region or economy just goes sour. And keep in mind, there are thousands of index funds out there to choose from. You don't have to choose Vanguard or Charles Robb or Merrill Lynch as your broker of choice. Pick one that works for you. I think Robinhood's getting more into index funds and ETFs, so a lot of millennials, including myself, like Robinhood, feel free to choose them as well. So what do you think about lazy index fund investing strategies or taking it easy with index funds? Leave a comment down below with your favorite fund allocation and percentages. Be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss a pulse-pounding second of all the action. Stay locked in, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.